Hello lovelies, welcome back to the channel. I am Kristen, your local kitchen witch, and today's video is a little bit different, obviously. This is not a food video, but I wanted to quickly film it before I get on with my day. Like I said in my last video, in the kitchen tour video, I've been very, very busy lately. And that video was filmed weeks ago, and this is my first day off since I filmed that video. So, uh, I'm not going to spend today filming. I am going to go on a hike with my husband and we're gonna hit up the grocery store after, but neither of us have decent masks to wear. We've been making do with like bandanas and scarves and stuff, but those aren't very effective and they're kind of a pain to try to keep on your face. So I'm going to be using some old clothes to make a mask very quickly for us. Uh, there are a million videos on the internet on how to do this. I didn't watch any of them. I'm fully winging it. You should probably watch those videos instead because I don't know how to sew and I don't know what I'm doing. But I thought that maybe doing this video would inspire somebody who hasn't gotten around to it yet, uh, who, who are just, you know, for whatever reasons you haven't been wearing a mask yet. It is not too late to start wearing a mask and the pandemic is not over. So it's definitely still worth spending the little bit of time it'll take to make one of these. Um, I am using a shirt that I think I bought my sophomore year of high school and I think I bought it, I did buy it from a thrift store. So it's a very, very old shirt and normally when clothes don't fit me anymore, this is obviously is from my thinner days, my arms aren't that tiny anymore, but normally I would give old clothes to a thrift store, but because this is so old and so worn out, there's so many frayed edges, there's a lot of holes in it. It's just, if I send it to a thrift store, it's probably not gonna get purchased. It's probably going to be sent to a landfill. So in those cases, normally I would suggest to people, if you know, you know, the clothes are too tattered to give away, uh, it's better to either repurpose them somehow on your own or send them to textile recycling if you can. That's usually not available for people. Textile recycling isn't a big thing in the United States yet, but uh, you can always turn your clothes into rags, which is what I usually do for cleaning, for uh, working out in the garage, for the wood shop, for stain. There's lots of things you need rags for, but today we're not doing rags. We're doing a pandemic face mask. <laughs> and sorry for any noise. My dog is at my feet as always, and she's a little huffy and noisy and she's, you know, a dog. So right now I don't really know how I'm going to approach this. Um, I'm just going to kind of mess around with it and figure it out as I go. But once I'm doing the voiceover, I will know by then what I did and I will let you know what I'm doing as I go along. Let's get started. The first thing I did was lay out my shirt open on the cutting mat to find the largest, flattest area of fabric to cut from. There are some tapered seams here since it was a fitted shirt, but I just kind of ignored those and cut outside of them. For my dimensions, I used a flexible measuring tape to measure my face from the front of each ear to each ear across the tip of my nose to get the widest measurement, which was about 10 inches. To give myself a seam allowance, I roughly measured my length at 11 inches. And for the height, I knew I was going to pleat it so it wasn't gonna really matter because I could just adjust the pleats to whatever I needed them to be. But I think it was about eight or nine inches from top to base. I just used the measurement markers on my cutting mat, but if you don't have a cutting mat, you can just use a regular ruler and a pen or marker to guide your cuts. Also, as you can see, the bottom of this shirt was curved and I figured I could probably use that to my advantage. So when I folded my fabric over and cut it, I made sure to follow along that curve. All of my measurements and cuts were very rough, but for a project like this, that's totally fine. I folded my fabric inside out and used a few purl pins to hold it in place while I messed with my sewing machine. I only use this machine a couple of times a year, so every time I do, I have to relearn how to use it. It probably doesn't help that this thing is super old and possibly doesn't work very well, since it too was bought secondhand years ago and has not been treated gently but I can usually eventually figure out how to get it to function again. <laughs> now that my seam is in place, I'm flipping it back out so that the pattern is on the outside. And now I'm just going to make some simple pleats. Again, I'm just using pins to hold my pleats in place. If you really wanted to be precise about this, you could measure out the pleats with a ruler and then iron them flat, but I could not be bothered. <laughs> 
Now I'm just sewing across my pins and the only purpose of this seam is to hold the pleats in place. If you're hand sewing and you want to reduce the amount of seams you have to create, you may save time by just ironing them down and then moving on to the next step. Which is not, surprisingly, re-threading the bobbin. I was really, really hoping that whatever thread was on there wouldn't run out, but I was not so lucky. I don't think I need to say that I did not know how to do this and was too stubborn to look up a YouTube video on how to do it, so I will spare you the 30 minutes of me messing with it. Now, my original plan for getting this mask to stay on my face was to sew in a couple hair elastics that could loop around my ears. Since I didn't have plain crafting elastic around, I thought this would be the next best thing, but when I actually tried to put them over my ears, they were way too small and it was super uncomfortable. So if you've got tiny ears, that might work for you, but it was not gonna work for me. The idea of elastic is really nice, but I realized for myself that it wasn't going to be necessary because of the way that I do my hair, which I will explain at the end. But if you think that elastic is going to be the best bet for you, there are a few options. Rubber bands, although they may be uncomfortable, hair elastics if you have small ears, or alternatively, thin headbands that you can cut down and sew to the needed size, or if you have a bin of old clothes to bring to the thrift store like I do, search through them to see if you have any elastic you could cut out and use, assuming, of course, you could repurpose the rest of the garment as well. But if you don't have your heart set on elastic, any type of string or ribbon will do. I have this cotton ribbon that had been wrapped around something I ordered online, and I threw it in the craft bin like any respectable hoarder would, and now I have a use for it. So as you saw, I folded the edges of the mask over with enough space to fit my ribbon, then I pinned them in place and sewed along the inside edge of that fold. This creates a little pocket to run the ribbon through so that I can remove it if needed to replace it or when I'm washing the mask. Now before you do this, if there's an ugly side and a pretty side to your mask, this would be the time to pick out which side you want to be in the front because there's going to be this ugly seam and rough edge in the back and I'm not going to do anything to cover that up. Now that we've got our ribbon pocket on both sides and everything's looking good, all there is left to do is run the ribbon through. The best way I figured to do this was to pin a safety pin to one end and use that as something rigid to hold on to instead of trying to just push fabric through fabric, which I learned does not work that well. Then I very roughly eyeballed the halfway point in the ribbon and cut it to have a strap for each side. Admittedly, I should have done this before running it through, but now you don't have to make my mistake. I think it's pretty good, actually. It's kind of like pushing in my mouth when I talk, but it's not bad. I can pull it. <laughs> that is destroying things. Um, I can pull it down below my chin, pull it up to my eyes, pretty much. I could probably pull it over my eyes. The pleats are pretty nice. It actually feels very, very snug, no matter which way I have it. I'm sorry, I'm looking at myself in the monitor, because I can't see myself looking at the camera, but uh, it's not bad at all, <laughs> despite all of the struggles I had. Um, so you can see that I have it, I left my like strings loose so that I could tie it above my little bun and below. That's because it felt much more secure that way because I could tighten it more on the bottom and then have it a little bit more loose on the top and then that fit really snugly but also very comfortably. However, I realized this hair situation is not going to be normal for everyone. This is actually how I have my hair most of the time because it doesn't all fit in a high bun because it's too short on the bottom. So this is how I have my hair in these two kind of creepy little buns most of the time when I'm, you know, out and about and doing things and cooking or whatever when I don't want my hair in my face. So this actually works perfectly for me to have these two loose, but so I can, you know, I can untie them and tie them every time I put them on so they're perfectly tight. Understandably, you may not want to be doing this with your hair. This may not be how you do your hair. So if that is the case for you, I would suggest, I'll untie this. 
I would suggest instead of tying these two together behind your head and these two together in the back of your neck, I would suggest either tying these behind your ears so you have like little hooks for your ears or instead of tying them if you don't want a knot behind your ear um, with a thicker piece of string or whatever you're using that could be annoying like if you're using something like this. So if you don't want to do that I would suggest just measuring, put it on, measure it to how much space you need to hook behind your ear comfortably and then cut it and either hot glue it or sew it so you have these you know perfectly sized hooks for your ears or loops for your ears. Obviously that's not going to be like convenient if someone else if you want to like wash this mask and let someone el else use it. It's um, going to be really inconvenient if you don't get it just perfect and it you know doesn't fit really snugly on your face but um, I think that that's going to be the best option if you don't have anything with elastic. The strings work for me but do whatever works for you. Hopefully this was, I don't, I don't know if it was helpful, but maybe it was inspiring and um, I'll try to get this one out as soon as possible to uh, encourage everyone to wear a mask. Again, it's a very small, easy thing we can all do to make everyone a little safer. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future videos. I will probably have more time coming up here to film more videos. Um, I love getting suggestions or if you have any comments or questions or if anything needs explanation, please leave that all in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video.